Hello everyone, it's my Uncle John. Today I am going to read S66020 Art and the Crunch Cereal Contest. Chapter 1 A touch of cinnamon, a hint of brown sugar, just a suspicious of cloves. <clears throat> Mr. Reed stood in front of the kitchen stove, bringing his lady's creation to life. The steam from the pot swirled up toward the frosted window. Yes, Siri, on uh, the chilly morning like this, everyone needs some oatmeal that will really stick to your little ribs. He swiveled swi around quickly, presenting a steaming pot. The rest of the family was uh, sitting at the table. I'm not very hungry this morning, said Arthur. Me neither, said D.W. Only Baby K looked so pleased. She liked playing with oatmeal. <clears throat> it always ended up in the most interesting places. Now, now, said the mother. Your father has been working hard on this. Let's give it a chance. Thank you, dear, said Mr. Reed. In recognition of your support, we'll start with a nice, healthy portion for you. He tilted the pot and tried to spoon some into her bowl. But nothing came out. Oatmeal had hardened like cement. Hmm, Mr. Reed looked puzzled. The baking soda must have reacted with the molasses. Oh, that's terrible. Then Mrs. Reed. From the look on her face, though, it didn't appear as if she minded at all. That was close, whispered G.W. Arthur nodded. Looks like we'll have to make do with regular cereal, said Mrs. Reed. Arthur, would you? Sure, Mom. Arthur got up to get the cereal from the cabinet. Mr. Reed put the pot in the sink. We'll have to bury this later with full military honors, of course. Arthur opened the box of crunchy cereal. It was his favorite. His father shook his head. I don't understand the appeal of that sugar-coated cardboard. Believe me, all you will get from that stuff is a mouthful of cavity. We are willing to take that risk, said D.W. Is Arthur shook out a serving? An envelope fell out of the box into his bowl. Wow, said D.W., and I thought letters only came in an alphabet suit. I had to open the envelope and read the note inside aloud. Welcome to the Crunchy Cereal Jungle Contest. Send us your song, and you could win a year's supply of Crunchy Cereal. Mr. Reed shook his head. Our best second place is a two-year supply. I kept ready. The winning jungle will also be aired on TV in the new Crunchy Cereal commercial. So don't just stand there, start crunching. If we won the contest, we'd be famous. Something here in the small print said Arthur include 20 box tops with each entry. Besides, that's a lot of crunching. Isn't there something about a void we are prohibited by law? Asked Mr. Mr. Reed. I don't think so, he said. Good, said D.W. Arthur dumped some cereal in her bowl. I'm glad you feel that way. If you want to be famous, start eating. Chapter 2. Over the next few days, Arthur thought about jingles while brushing his teeth. Crunch, crunch, he thought about them while taking a bath. Crunch, crunch, crunch. He even thought about them while doing his homework. Crunch, 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 crunch. But none of this thinking got him very far. Wanting to write a jingle was a lot easier than actually making one up. Arthur, you need to get some fresh air, said his mother. Go outside and play. I can, Mom. The deadline is getting closer. Sometimes it's good to take a break. Uh, recharge your creative batteries. Clear your head. Why don't you go make a snowman? I don't think. Move it, said his mother. That's an order. Arthur went outside, but he wasn't happy about it. He started rolling a giant snowball started chipping pieces out of it. The snowball was beginning to look like a giant piece of crunchy cereal. Is that what I think it is? The W had come outside too. She shook her head at Arthur's snow sculpture. Mom wants me to clear my head. I was hoping this would help. You're in a rut. Be in a rut. Said D.W., you need to think harder. I'm trying. 
Not to insist it. I've never thought so hard in my life. Well, it doesn't show much. Maybe I could help. We've been over this, DW. You have your job. I know, I know. I'm supposed to eat the cereal. Arthur nodded. Don't forget that. Forget it. How could I? You put boxes in my bed, my toy chest, and my closet. Everywhere I go, crunchy cereal is waiting for me. Don't complain. I'm eating it too, and I've still got the hard part to deal with. DW was not impressed. You don't seem to be dealing very well. Have you tried dunes? That sort of rhymes with crunch, sort of. I don't think the crunchy cereal people are looking for, sort of. They're looking for rhythm. They're looking for poetry. They're looking for a way to sell more cereals, said DW. Arthur shook his head. You just don't have the right attitude. It's not surprising. You're too young to understand great art. DW laughed. I may not know great art, but I know what, it, what I like. We're not talking about ice cream flavors here, DW. A jingle has to be the perfect combination of words with the perfect melody. Well, what about lunch? Said DW, that rhymes with crunch. Arthur looked up at the sky and sighed. Why couldn't inspiration hit him like a flash of lightning? He was ready. He was waiting. A snowball hit him in the chest. Bullseye! I'll bullseye you right back, said Arthur. He scooped up some snow and threw it back. For that moment, at least, his head was clear. Chapter 3. The school music room was empty except for Arthur. All the other kids were out at recess, running around and playing in the snow. Arthur was trying out notes at the piano. Dun, dun, too low, thought Art, too sad. He tried to try the high note. Ding, too silly, thought Arthur. He played the note in between. Ding, Arthur nodded. It was a start. Door to the music room, the banged open. How's your jingle coming, Arthur? asked Buster. His face was red, melting snow was dripping off his coat. I pretty much finished the words. Let's hear them, said Buster. Arthur cleared his throat. Eat crunchy, he said. Buster waited, but Arthur seemed to be done. Is there more? he asked. No, that's it. What do you think? Buster thought it over. It's short, he decided. Short and sweet, said Arthur, just like the cereal. Makes sense to me. I like it, so can you come out and play now? I need more than words. I need a tune to go with it, but I haven't had much love. Hmm. He looked at Arthur sitting alone at the piano. Maybe you should think bigger. What would be bigger? You know, more people, more instruments. Arthur liked the idea. If you had more musicians, Buster went on, it would be easy to come up with a tune. More musicians, said Arthur? You mean like a band? You can have additions and everything, he said, but we could check on the playground. I bet lots of kids would be interested. Arthur grabbed his coat. Okay, he said, let's find out. The schoolyard was filled with bundled up kids running around, making a lot of noise. Hi, right, Francine, said Buster. She was just standing over a fallen pile of snow. It would have been beautiful. Arthur has a question for you, said Buster. The snow sculpture to end all snow sculpture. It was bold. It was daring. I was wondering, Francine, Arthur began, but I couldn't do it by myself. I needed the help of my friends. And for they're here for me, she looked up at Arthur and Buster. But they were inside doing some dumping instead. She folded, she folded her arms. I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive them. That's too bad, said Arthur. Come, come on, Buster. We don't want to ask her at a time like this. She's in too much pain. Ask me, ask me what? Arthur wants you to be in his band, said Buster. Francine's eyes widened. A band? I get to play my drum? You would, said Arthur. But since you are feeling so bad, Francine looked back at the fallen pile of snow. She gave it a kick. Oh, well. She said, easy come, easy go. She turned back to Arthur. So when do we start? Chapter four, Arthur walked to the middle of the huge concert hall and started out, stared out at the light. He knew the audience was there, even if he couldn't see them. These were the country's greatest music critics. 
They had all come to hear his band play the crunch cereal jingle. Arthur spoke into the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, there has been a change in the program, he announced. As you can see, I don't have a complete band yet, but Buster, Francine, and I will gladly. The audience started to boo. They had flown in from all over the country to hear the full band, not a few instruments that patched together. Don't waste our time. Get off the stage. Come back when you're really ready. Arthur held up his hand. If I could just explain, he began. Hey, Arthur, said Buster, snap out of it. Arthur blinked, looked around his living room. I'm snapping, I'm snapping, he said. What's the matter, Buster asked. You look worried. Well, I am a little. What if nobody comes today? What if they just ignore my signs about auditioning? Um, Arthur, I don't think that'll be a problem. Look, outside the reed garage, a long line of keys had formed. Each of them was holding an instrument. Great, said Arthur. Let's get started. As Buster took charge of the line, Mr. Reed came out to see what was going on. Buster explained why all the keys were there. Mr. Reed looked relieved. Oh, it's that serial business. Well, this is certainly ambitious. He paused. Are we expected to feed everyone? Oh, no. Arthur has that all taken care of. Inside the garage, Arthur had put out bowls of crunchy cereal. Eat up, eat up, he said. There's plenty for everyone after a few minutes of crunching. The additions began. Sue Ellen was first. She played a riff of notes on her saxophone. Good, said Arthur. But did I hear something rattling? I think some of the crunchy cereal fell into my home. Well, try and blow it out next. Arthur listened to keys with the, bun the banjos and piccolos, oboes and kajus. One kid blew such a long note on his trumpet that he almost fainted. The best part was when Grandma Dora arrived. Heard about the tryout, she said. No special treatment for me. Don't even think about all the cookies I baked over the years. Never mind about the chicken soup either. Just listen up. And with that, she pulled out a hair harmonica and began to play. The jazz note drew everyone's attention and then she sang, Grandma's got a brand new bag. Gonna groove it all night long. Arthur was impressed. You're hired, he said. The last person in line was the Binky Barnes. You ready, he asked. Arthur nodded. Solo off a clarinet by some old dead guy. I think he played a complicated series of uh, notes. Arthur's mouth dropped open. Wow, that was beautiful. Binky stalked up to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So am I in or not? Absolutely well on one condition, which is that you help me finish the last box of crunch. Binky smiled. It's a deal, he said. Chapter 5 Arthur stood in front of the newly formed Crunchy Bunch Band. Besides Buster and Francine, it included Binky Muffy, the Brain Suellen, Prunella, and Grandma Dora. Where should I go? DWS. She was standing by the door. Arthur walked over to her. Additions are over. DW. Besides, you don't even play an instrument. Don't worry, I don't want to play. I just want to be in charge. The p that position is filled, Arthur said firmly. He opened the door. I think I hear Nadine calling you. Nadine was DW's invisible friend. She sounds like she's stuck in a snowbank. You better check. Hmm, <laughs> mother DW? Big brothers can be so bossy. Arthur closed the door behind her and walked back to the others. Now, where were we? Oh, yes. I want to start off with the bang. So everyone should play a real loud note. Then I will, could we, Francine began, Arthur stared at her. Excuse me, does someone have a question? I don't see anyone raising a hand. Francine rolled her eyes and raised her hand. Yes, Francine, I just thought it might be nice to start off with the drum roll for dramatic impact. Yeah, said Muffy, putting a violin under her chin, followed by some strings. She started playing 
and the brain started plucking his cello. There will add the horns, said Sue Ellen. She blew into her saxophone while Prunella raised her trumpet. No, said Arthur. Everyone kept playing. Arthur waved his arm. No, 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 no. Everyone stopped. The silence was deafening. Listen to me, said Arthur. I got the entry form. I have eaten 15 boxes of crunch and this is my jingle. So we are going to play it my way. Any questions? No, none for me. Very clear. Carry on. Arthur took a deep breath. Good, he said. But what do we play from? I'll show you, said Arthur. He passed out some shit music. There isn't much here, said Francine. Just a few notes. Well, it's a jingle. The notes repeat. Now, if everyone is ready, let's give it everything we've got. One, two, and Arthur motioned the band to play. And they did. Ram, ram, rama. The strange sound shot out of Arthur's garage in all directions. It hit Mrs. Teeble first. She was walking along the sidewalk. The sound shook the snow from the branches overhead, covering her like powdered sugar on a donut. At the same time, Bob the Barber was cutting Miss the Tingley's hair. Ram! The sound blasted through the closed window. Bob was startled and clipped off most of her bangs. Sound weakened at the edge of a town, but it still packed a punch off his parent, the cross wires, hurled it in the living room. It's an air raid, said Ed. We don't have air raids, his wife. Millicent reminded him, but I'm not taking any chances. We spent all the money on a bomb shelter. We may as well use it. They both went down to the basement, where there was nothing more to be heard. The end.